Alrighty, well, hello everyone. My name is Dr. Jacob Bonney. I am the analytics consultant here at Stepping Blocks. Uh, really excited to spend the next 30 minutes with you talking about data and data literacy. Uh, this is uh, an exciting topic to me, uh, something I, I really enjoy and, and throughout my background in higher ed and, and student success, I've I had the opportunity to think about leveraging data in a variety of different ways. So hopefully our conversation today uh, will be of benefit to you and, and your area. Um, just a reminder, Erin uh, uh, King, our marketing manager, is joining me. So uh, she will be able to uh, help supplement the conversation, help monitor the chat. So feel free to share your thoughts as we proceed forward uh, in the chat. Uh, we will have some reflection questions towards the end of the session. And so uh, feel free to, uh, to comment there or, or elsewhere throughout the presentation if you have any thoughts. Uh, we'd love for this to be a collaborative conversation around how you're leveraging data uh, in your unit uh, at your institution. The learning outcomes for today uh, are really focused around knowledge of data uh, and how your knowledge compares to uh, your institution of role. So uh, we might have some folks from institutional research on the call with us, certainly career services, alumni relations, and other units around campus. And uh, I recognize that, that your usage of data might be a little bit different depending on your role and position. And so uh, our conversation today will be pretty high level and, and really reflective to, to allow you to think about um, how you are leveraging some of this data and uh, perhaps what opportunities there are to, to improve your knowledge or your unit's knowledge and, and usage of data. Uh, we're gonna be focusing on four uh, areas. First, research questions. Second, methodology. Three, definitions. Uh, and four, exploration. So if you haven't taken a stats class in a little while or a, uh, a fundamentals or research methods class in a little while, we'll, we'll do a very, very, very brief overview uh, of some things as, as we get started. Uh, but really, I uh, wanted to kind of split it up into these, these four areas. Uh, so when we're talking about crafting research questions, uh, I actually was collaborating with a faculty member several years ago uh, in, in my position in, in student success. And uh, the faculty member shared a model with me, the Kirkpatrick's evaluation model. So uh, I know some folks may be familiar with this model. If not, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an overview here today. Uh, but this has become a, a great way that I have framed research question development uh, in my mind. And, and you know, a question here might be, why are we talking about research questions? I thought we were gonna talk about data. Um, in, in my mind and from my perspective, it's really important to know where you're going uh, with your questioning in order to be able to unpack how you're leveraging data. And so this uh, Kirkpatrick's model, uh, feel free to, to look it up. I've got a citation down there below, but uh, you can search for Kirkpatrick uh, and you'll find it pretty quickly. Uh, it was originally a, a model used in uh, psychology and sociology uh, to, to talk about program evaluation. Uh, but to me, it's, it's a great way to frame all of the work that we're doing in higher ed and in student affairs uh, when, we're, when we're thinking about how we're measuring our various strategies or outcomes. So uh, according to Kirkpatrick, sort of this, this entry level is about reaction. Uh, are students enjoying uh, the, the programs or initiatives that you're putting on? Same thing, alumni, are they, uh, are they enjoying those sessions that you're, that you're hosting uh, as you're, you're supporting them? So that's sort of this sort of fundamental baseline understanding is reaction. A little bit higher beyond that is learning. So are students and alumni actually learning as a result of attending your programs or your activities? Uh, from there, we talk about behavior. Uh, are they applying or implementing what they're learning? Perhaps that's like a, a resume uh, workshop and then you, you know physically seeing students uh, implement some of those strategies on, on their resume. And ultimately, we wanna see results, right? Uh, and so how are we uh, seeing outcomes achieved as a result of what the participant experienced? And so again, when you think about this contextually, we're talking about uh, you know, program development or uh, training development uh, primarily, uh, that's the usage of Kirkpatrick, but I have sort of broadly applied this model to, uh, to initiatives in higher ed for, for a number of years um, and find it really helpful to contextualize and think through uh, these strategies. It, does someone have a question? I'm hearing a little bit of feedback on my side. If, if you could mute your mic, if uh, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is a, sort of a fundamental way that I've explored um, research questions. I'd love to, to yield the floor if there are, are thoughts or comments. Uh, has anybody used a similar model to, to frame how you are exploring data um, or understanding data outcomes for your area?
hearing none, I'll I'll continue to roll forward and and we'll. Oh, d did I see a mic? Come on, yep. I was just gonna say we have a process called through handshake, where we do our outcomes, and then in my individual talent community, they actually have an outcomes process that they use for nursing students, and mm -hmm. so they do that on their own. So that's the current model. So you all are, are thinking about outcomes in a couple of different ways, perhaps splitting that up by uh, by discipline. Absolutely. Yes. That's a great strategy. Any other thoughts about how folks are assessing or kind of crafting the, the, the research questions they plan on implementing? Well, hopefully this model is helpful. You know, I think it's also important to kind of contextualize. We can't always get to all of these things with every uh, program or initiative. Perhaps we can get to results-based learning, um, you know, as a result of a, a course or uh, certainly a, as uh, as you just mentioned, the, the, this idea of like a program around nursing, there's going to be results outcomes, but uh, we, we can't always see results, uh, high level results from, you know, perhaps a single workshop. Uh, in the same way we might be able to easily capture reaction or learning uh, for folks who are familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. Now I'm really digging deep here right into the, the treasure trove of, of student affairs uh, concepts, but certainly if you're, if you're thinking about Bloom's, how are you uh, applying, applying the appropriate uh, level of Bloom's or the appropriate word uh, or, or learning outcome phrase, so. Something else to kind of think about in high level terms is, is methodology. Uh, I will admit that I tend to be a mixed methods researcher. Uh, I did a very qualitative dissertation and, and could talk ad nauseum about my dissertation. I think I even uh, referenced it uh, yesterday. That tends to be the hallmark of an academic, right, as, as soon as you start talking about your dissertation. But um, but the uh, really the, the approach here uh, that I wanted folks to kind of think through is how you're exploring and leveraging qualitative data, how you're exploring and leveraging quantitative data, and then ultimately how you might mix those together and, and use some mixed methods research, uh, you know, and do a little bit of triangulation work. Uh, a comment here might be, why are we doing qualitative and quantitative research? I thought we were just kind of talking about uh, data and exploring outcomes for our students. And and for me, I think the conversation here uh, that's really beneficial is is to think about uh, all all that we do, we do in terms of um, methodology and, and really a research approach. Uh, by sort of crafting your questions and, and thinking about how you're going to explore that data, it allows you to get to a point where you're pulling data in, in a way that makes the most sense. Uh, so uh, certainly uh, we could talk about the tools that we've got at Stepping Blocks here to help you uh, kind of supplement other strategies. I know a lot of universities do surveys, uh, focus groups, uh, whether that's with students or alumni. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, a strategy that I would uh, encourage folks to think about is, is how are you, uh, you know, asking the appropriate questions and the appropriate methods and perhaps using multiple methods to triangulate uh, and verify uh, that information. So uh, does anybody have any thoughts about how they've perhaps used uh, a variety of methods to unpack the student experience or the alumni experience? Uh, perhaps how folks have even used our, our tools at Stepping Blocks. Hey, Jacob. It's good to see you. This is Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Good to talk to you. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I work in career services and we have used various data points and, and information that we gather from a number of places really to direct our programming, uh, trying to identify gaps in service, trying to identify populations that may need some special attention. But uh, basically we use the different methods and different types of data to, to direct our priorities. Yeah, I think that's a great approach, right? Trying to identify the strategies or uh, the specific pieces that you need to answer. Uh, and then and then working, you know, to the next level, what type of data can help uh, help get you there, um, whether that's, uh, you, you know, attendance data from initiatives to, to be able to identify who's participating in your programs or uh, really, uh, you know, a variety of different surveys and, and resources to to kind of unpack these things. We know that uh, different folks are often interested in different outcomes. Uh, and so I think that's kind of a key component too. What what data do you need to share with university leadership versus uh, with your, uh, you know, your staff uh, in, in the unit and perhaps 
uh, exploring the data or exploring your information in a couple of different ways would help you best do that. So thank you, Lynn. Any other, th oh, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, Dr. Bryant, I just wanted to, um, just to add, um, thinking about the, the complements of different types of, of data um, and research. So, you know, we get asked a lot if the NAICS first destination survey um, is a replacement for what we're trying to do, or, um, you know, if, if they're doing the NACE first destination survey, why do they need graduate outcomes? But, you know, what we're really good at is the longitudinal, longitudinal data, so the lifetime outcomes. And then what the NACE survey is really good at is, you know, that first destination, what are they doing, you know, the first six months to a year um, after graduation? So really pairing those two methods together to create the full picture and the full story with, you know, you can't have one without the other to really explain um, how well your, your university is doing. I mean, anyone in the room, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, but that's just, you know, what I've learned along the way in terms of you know, finding the compliments. Yeah, great point, Erin. And I, I would also add uh, the voice of the student uh, is so critical to that. I'm, I'm super passionate about, uh, you know, engaging with students directly and, and asking good questions and um, so anytime there's an opportunity to do a focus group or, uh, you know, work with students uh, throughout their their journey, uh, I think is super helpful. Our folks and alumni seem to do that uh, particularly well. I, I uh, seem to be invited to an alumni uh, focus group uh, every other week, <laughs> more or less, uh, from, from all of my various institutions. So uh, props to those folks. But I, I do think there's some great opportunities to, to incorporate surveys, uh, our platform, uh, you know, with, with, as you said, Aaron, the longitudinal data, and then um, some, some specific uh, student student voice pieces. And, and really that idea of, of tri triangulation, if, if that's uh, either new for folks or, or something you haven't heard in a number of years, um, we, we just want to utilize multiple data points to be able to help verify and, and paint a complete picture uh, that then you can take to, uh, you know, a grant funder or uh, university leadership or, or even help your team understand what's happening. Uh, in broad terms. So something else uh, to kind of chat, the next main point here for our conversation is around defining data. And certainly, you know, within the context of uh, stepping blocks, we've got a, a great data dictionary uh, and I've got that on the next slide. But what I wanted folks to just sort of reflect on at, at this juncture is, what are your strategies to define uh, data, uh, data points, uh, context for data, uh, either across your institution or across your unit. Uh, we could think about this in a variety of ways, but but kind of at the core, it's helpful to have folks understand uh, language and, and information and, and data points as, as they're being articulated. So uh, certainly in, in my previous work uh, in, in student success, part of my job was to, to help uh, articulate, uh, you know, all of the great terms that, that we throw around all the time. FTIC, first time in college student. Uh, certainly uh, when we were talking about retention metrics, uh, you know, the specific cohort that that is focused on. Graduation cohort years. There's all of these sort of great terms uh, that we might be using broadly and perhaps our, our less seasoned staff are not familiar with those or uh, folks from different institutions might have dip different operating definitions uh, for some of those concepts. So. I'm not saying you necessarily have to do a full audit of every data point you're utilizing and uh, articulating those in the same way, but just as on the previous slide, we talked about triangulation, we would want to make sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're understanding the definitions uh, as they apply in a variety of settings. So if you're using a survey plus our data, uh, plus your own focus group, if a student says they graduated in 2019, what does that mean? Does that mean the calendar year 2019, the academic year 2019? Is that 1819? Is that 1920? There's so many different sort of ways to, to split that up. So uh, again, I, I don't expect us to solve all of these issues uh, today, but wanted to sort of throw this out here as a discussion point um, and a reflection point. Uh, perhaps is there anybody uh, on, on the call who's thought about how they're defining data and utilizing data in their area and, and perhaps some tips or tricks uh, to share with the group. Hearing none, I'll continue to roll forward. As I mentioned, uh, we do have a data dictionary on 
uh, our website under resources. So this gives you a, a direct link to how we are defining the fields uh, that you would pull uh, from the Graduate Explorer dashboard. So uh, again, great resource, feel free to, uh, to review this. Uh, just so that you know what you're pulling if, if you're utilizing and pulling Graduate Explore data. Uh, but I, I would also suggest that you think about uh, pulling this same resource uh, or pooling this same resource for your area if, if not done, done so already. Uh, I know a lot of institutions have a very robust uh, IR department that, are, that have data dictionaries or uh, data cookbooks. So uh, feel free to utilize those resources at your institution if they're available as well. Uh, seeing a comment from uh, Jeffrey in the chat here, are non-binary genders listed under undefined? Uh, yes, und so undefined would be, um, uh, that, that's correct, or any other uh, any other situation where we would be unaware of uh, the, the gender of the individual. So uh, the next step and sort of the last uh, step to this process is thinking about exploring the data. Uh, so what tools or resources are available to help you explore uh, the data? And, and I've got an example on the next slide, but just really wanted to, to again, open this up for conversation or, or comments from folks. Uh, if there are particular resources or strategies on your campus uh, that you've implemented to explore the data, again, that could be our data coming from stepping blocks or uh, some of your other data points uh, across campus. So any, any, anyone wanna share some of the ways that they're exploring the data through some of the tools and resources they have access to? Um, I've recently used Qualtrics for a survey. It gave me a pretty good report to at least make a decision about something. So um, we have Qualtrics on our campus. Absolutely, yeah. So Qualtrics is a great resource. I've used that before uh, to, do, to do quick surveys. And sometimes uh, that idea of you know, we talk about a survey and survey can mean so many different things, right? A survey could be two quick questions that you send to students via text message. Uh, a, tech, a survey could also be a hundred questions, uh, you know, with, with a larger analysis. So absolutely. Other, uh, other comments? Well, in particular, one of the resources I wanted to highlight uh, that we have available at Stepping Blocks are a series of uh, Tableau templates. Uh, so if you follow uh, the link, and, and we'll provide this link to you, it's, it's also a resource on our webpage. Um, we have developed a, a series of Tableau templates that are available uh, for free. Uh, Tableau Public is a, is a free um, uh, resource for folks who can download that software. Uh, and you could leverage Tableau to do some additional exploration. And so uh, depending on our, our time here, I'll, I'll pop out uh, and actually show you some of these uh, uh, resources in Tableau. Uh, but these are some, some additional reports that we've developed to help folks uh, think about exploring and transforming the data, uh, complementary to you know, the dashboards uh, that are available through Graduate Insights. So we can talk about that. Uh, if folks are are interested in learning more, but I'd really just encourage you uh, again to connect with your institutional research office or any of the the support that you might have on campus, uh, should that support exist, to to think about how you're uh, transforming or leveraging the data, how you're aligning uh, everything through those uh, those definitions, uh, and kind of conducting that deeper analysis of of what's happening on your campus. And so uh, I wanted to just sort of provide this as an overview for discussion. Uh, what are some of the aspects of, of data literacy that we've talked about today or not talked about today uh, that, that you are looking to strengthen? Uh, what are some additional information or resources that you would need to kind of move forward with, with the suggestions provided or, or with whatever areas of data literacy you're interested in exploring? Um, and as we talked about in the last session, it's hard to know what you don't know, but what additional gaps uh, might there be in your knowledge of data uh, and perhaps even on the institutional level, what are some gaps and how, how might you address those? So I will, I'll turn it over to the group to see if there's any, any thoughts here for discussion. Yeah, I guess uh, I'll chime in if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, so uh, I'm with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, we just implemented Handshake last summer 
So I am running my kind of annual reports on what we did, you know, the surveys, appointments, uh, career fair, basically everything that we've done over the last ac ac academic year. And kind of one of the things that I don't know is what is going to be useful for the institution. Like, I, I just, I don't want to waste my time going deep dive into something and then having it just be completely ignored. Uh, I do know that data visualization and things like Tableau are useful and, and certainly helpful. And I do come from an institutional research background. Uh, this is my first year, year and a half in career services. But, um, you know, it's just one of those things we're really trying to hit home on what's important for reporting, what isn't important for reporting. And, you know, given that we have nothing since my position <laughs> didn't exist before I came along, um, you know, I, I don't really like there's not a body of work that I can kind of go off of. I'm just kind of like, you know, eyeballing it. So by all means, if anybody or you, Dr. Bonnie, or anybody from Stepping Blocks has ideas for what is and isn't useful, I am more than happy to steal your ideas and pass them off as my own. I, I see a hand, uh, Lynn, as a comment. So I, I will yield the floor to Lynn. <clears throat> Thanks, Jacob. Um, yeah, this is Lynn Hansen from Career Services at UCF. And um, if you're like me, you get data requests, if not weekly, daily. <laughs> um, and they can be for a lot of different things, whatever might be crossing leadership's desk. And I have found that with Handshake and the first destination data and other things, I'm able to respond really very quickly. Um, um, I've got folks on my team that do deeper dives and use um, stepping blocks and other resources, but uh, an example would be if um, leadership is giving a report based on our status as a Hispanic serving institution, uh, they will want to collect information about engaging with students in the Latinx population. And so I can quite easily align um, the data from Handshake on that parameter. I can pull out how many Latinx students attended fairs, workshops, had appointments, uh, attended presentations within the classroom, um, all of those different things. Um, and, it's, and it's made it easier for me to be very responsive. And it's also been easier for me just to take care of responding to that request myself. Uh, before it was that easy, I had to put it out to the group and find somebody to help me that was working with one of those programs or any of those areas. And so it's much quicker now. Well, I think that's a great point, Lynn. And, and the piece that I would add to, to the conversation uh, here too is often uh, the next question I would get uh, in my uh, data analysis role in higher ed was, do we have any examples of students who uh, sort of met those criteria or attended a program or whatnot. And, and so that's where kind of going back to that, you know, mixed methods approach, uh, having having the survey data at your fingertips or having the reports at your fingertips, but then having a student story that complements or uh, helps articulate what's happening is really powerful. Uh, that might not need to go forward in every case. Uh, not every, uh, you know, sort of board of trustees meeting will require a uh, you know, students to uh, come forward and, and provide their story about what happened, but but certainly having those use cases down to the individual student level who could articulate them, I, I think, are, is is really powerful uh, and helps uh, helps continue to humanize the data that that we're looking at on a daily basis. Uh, you know, with with all of these data points, so something to think about. Uh, we see that actually. I think a great example of that is the Georgia State major pages for folks who are in the the session uh, on Tuesday afternoon about ROI, uh, Georgia State has pulled in uh, some specific examples of graduates and, and what they're up to. And, and that really helps contextualize uh, what that degree looks like uh, for students uh, who, are, who are on that path. So uh, again, I think a great, a great mixture of uh, the stepping blocks, kind of broad outcomes data, uh, and, and then in, uh, using Graduate Explorer to identify specific graduates who uh, could share their story. Great question and great follow-up conversation. Any additional sort of thoughts or questions? Well, it brings something to mind um, for me, Dr. Bonnie. And, you know, I wonder, um, again, this is a perspective that um, 
I don't experience firsthand. So maybe someone from the audience can share, share their experience. Um, but Dr. Timothy Rennick from the National Institute for Student Success, he shared that, you know, the first step to um, creating a student success initiative, which, you know, ultimately this is all tied to that, um, is getting the house in order. Um, so it, it sounds like that if, if you have so many data requests coming from, you know, from everywhere, then if leadership is on the same page, not that, um, you know, anyone in the room has control over what leadership is doing, um, but that really would be the first step into creating a, you know, a streamlined process, a streamlined program, um, you know, at the departmental level. So, and it was a high level conversation, you know, from someone who, who does come from, from that, um, from that space inside the university, but, um, you know, step one to step one, step one to getting leadership on the same page is, um, you know, having fundamental data in place. So it, it, it's almost the chicken or the egg, you know, which comes first, having leadership or having the data. But um, those two things seem to be, um, you know, key drivers of, um, you know, it, if you feel like your playbook is, is working or if it's overwhelming. Um, so hopefully that resonated with, um, with some of you here. If not, feel free to, you know, clarify <laughs> um, the, the story I was trying to share. No, Aaron, I think that's a great point. And, and to me, it, part of it goes back to the funding component. How are you uh, able to articulate uh, your data and your outcomes in a way that uh, not only internally, uh, uh, you know, sort of highlights uh, how you, investments made in your unit uh, are successful for the institution, but great data to be able to share uh, with, uh, you know, donors or even alumni, right? I, I think uh, as we have folks uh, kind of from, from Greer Services and alumni on the line here, uh, some great partnerships could be formed by, you know, having great career services outcome data and being able to put that in the hands of uh, our advancement folks who might want to take that forward and, and um, uh, you know, be able to articulate how uh, donations from those alumni can go back to uh, helping students uh, in this space. So absolutely some great opportunities for, for collaboration there.